Hey everybody, welcome back to Letterman Row. It is Friday. It's before an Ohio State game day this week at Penn State. That means it's time for bold predictions. I am Austin Ward, joined as always by Jeremy Birmingham and Spencer Holbrook. And Berm, I guess we have to start by patting Spencer on the back. Um, he, he went really quickly with it last week when Seven Banks scored. And actually he had a ton of uh, supporters hitting up our Twitter feeds and our mentions saying, hey, Spencer got this right. But when we were leaving the horseshoe on Saturday, like, I don't know, does he get full credit? There weren't four turnovers. No, I mean, I'm going to give him like a quarter credit. Uh, Chives, but understand that a quarter credit is better than no credit. You said that there would be four turnovers and there were only two. And we had to goad you into giving a player to predict to score. And you just happened to pick the right one. Which, well, so I, I'm going to give you 0.25% credit. Take it or leave it. 0.25% is actually not a quarter. Shh. Wow. Um, I also want to Don't just point out that I said Nebraska would – I also said Nebraska would score first, and that was also correct. So, oh boy. okay, I was trying to get him to accept less than a quarter credit, Boston. <laughs> and now it's gone somehow. And, up. and now, now it's one point two five percent. Great, <laughs> great. Your math is very suspect this morning. What I hope one? your bold predictions for Ohio State, Penn State are more accurate than your math. Uh, I mean, the, I hope they're more accurate than my bold prediction a week ago that Justin Fields would uh, score nine touchdowns. Apparently, that was a little short. Little, little short, but that's not uh, my fault. That is clearly the fault of the Ohio State coaching staff who uh, decided to not let him score nine touchdowns because he could have if, if he wanted to. We all know that. Yeah. Um, so my prediction for Penn State week is uh, not only is Chris Olave going to play as we fully expect that he will – but that he's going to score three touchdowns and, and be the, the offensive player of the game. Or, en français, du jour. It's the offensive player of the day. Okay, um, that works. I Speaking of receivers, I mean, I, how much credit do I get uh, for Garrett Wilson developing into a monster, which, you know, I was really out on a limb for that. Yeah, I mean, great, great, great bold prediction. Five-star receiver plays good. <laughs> I nailed it. All right, Spencer, yeah. keep your streak going. What do you um, got? I think Ohio State will rush for over 200 yards. Um, I think the offensive line had some things to work out. I think nobody in the run game seemed to be on the same page last week. I don't think it was a talent issue. I just think – and I don't think it was a, you know, an effort issue. I just think it just seemed weird. Nobody was on the same page, and I – once I watched the game after hearing Josh Myers talk about it, I completely agreed. Um, last year when Ryan Day was challenged with his run game against Penn State, mind you, he came out on the first drive and had 90 yards on the first drive rushing. So I think it's going to be more of the same. He's heard the complaints. He's heard you doubt. his. He's heard not you personally, Austin, but he's heard you. Oh, it was Austin. I, he's definitely heard me do it. You, the collective Ohio State fan and reporter, uh, <laughs> Doubt Just him. Say it. I think that they need yards. to pick a guy. Get to get to it, Spencer. I think that they need to pick a back. Yeah, the royal, the royal you. <laughs> yeah, two hundred yards rushing, Ohio State. You know they had that even last week, even though there was so much uncertainty and hand wringing. Although um, I can't, I think it was forty something yards that Jack Miller and Xavier Johnson had on the final drive, so that did push it over the top. I know I I had dropped that stat on Saturday to say that everything was fine. Look. They can certainly get better on the ground. I don't think there's any doubt about that, but they were also pretty close on, on a number of occasions, and, and it was blocked up well where they could have hit something big. Um, I will keep saying it. I think it, it's inevitable at some point that um, Trey Sermon or perhaps Steel Chambers uh, may be getting in that mix to be to get more involved as rushers. I just I think what you saw from Master T was similar to what he did last year when he was – when he was healthy, there's just not a lot of side to side wiggle. Uh, when he gets rolling, obviously you don't want to try and tackle him. Uh, and he gets to the goal line, he's going to bowl you over and score. But, um, you know, a cut, you know, some of this uh, outside zone stuff, I'm not sure that it really suits his ability. And I think that this is the week. I said it last week in bold predictions on Letterman Row that Trey Sermon would score three times. I'm going to double down on that. If if Ohio State is going to make a great six times, 
<laughs> I'm going to make the same prediction again. Oh, oh. I'm not going to go crazy with the six touchdowns or more like you did last week with Fields. But it, if if Spencer is correct about, and I think he is, Ryan Day trying to prove a point about the rushing attack and, you know, that last week was an aberration, uh, that they were really close to doing the things that they wanted and confident, then they'll probably come out and try and run it down Penn State's throat. And Trey Sermon, I think, will be heavily involved in that. Didn't score last week, and I think he will do it three times on Saturday. Those are our first round of bold predictions, because in the video, we get a little weirder than we do on the site. Can't wait. What What else is stewing in that brain, Berm? Uh, Sean Clifford is going to run for 150 yards. 150. Wow. Uh, I, I think that Penn State has to realize that if they want to have a chance to beat Ohio State, the way to do it is to keep the Buckeyes offense off the field. Obviously, uh, Journey Brown is out. Noah Kane is out. Devin Ford's a good running back. Um, but I think what we saw from Penn State in 2018 when Trace McSorley went, boat, you know, cuckoo over there in Happy Valley running for, what, a 4,000 yards that night. Um, I think that that's that's the game plan. And I I think that Sean Clifford is a good enough passer to keep you honest, uh, especially with Pat Fryermuth out there, a guy that's going to be difficult to contain. Uh, I think that they're going to really try to focus on on Sean Clifford on the ground. And they have to be emboldened by what they saw Adrian Martinez and Luke McCaffrey do a week ago. And so to me, that's prediction numero dos. Berm, do you think that Ohio State is just willing to concede that defensively. I don't mean that they're happy about it, but like I don't see Kerry Combs or Greg Madison or Al Washington just you know swallowing some pride or whatever you want to put it to put a spy on a quarterback. I think they're almost it's not back to the old bend and don't break you know fickle or earlier defenses. I, I just think like if if the choice is between letting a quarterback run for a first down or taking somebody out of coverage and then maybe letting him throw for one. I think they're willing to concede that. Is, is that? Is that no, I agree, and I think there's two reasons for that. Number one, because you you like the matchup of your linebacker's athleticism against Sean Clifford, and you think maybe you can beat him to a spot. That's number one. Number two, uh, as you said, you're not going to allow Pat Fryermuth or Devin Ford or someone like that to get out and beat you because they're more likely to have, have a home run type play. Number three, as we saw last year in Columbus, if you get to keep hitting the quarterback, that's pretty good. Uh, and it ended up, you know, knocking Sean Clifford out of the game last year in Columbus. And that's sort of unbelievably changed the game in a positive direction for Penn State because they brought in a guy who was running the football when Ohio State wasn't expecting it. So uh, I think that clearly the Buckeyes against Nebraska were OK with letting Adrian Martinez and Luke McCaffrey kind of be the guys to run the ball. The, the Nebraska running backs averaged like two yards a carry or something. It wasn't of situation where they couldn't stop the run. It was just pretty much allowing the quarterback to do that because you'd rather have Adrian Martinez or Luke McCaffrey make plays than Wandale Robinson or someone like that. So I think the same principle applies this week. Okay. Mixing in some analysis with the predictions. That's what we're – It's a bold analysis. (laughs) We're trying to mix in here. Spencer, what do you got? I was going to go opposite of what Berm just said about Sean Clifford because I think Ohio State will be able to contain him because, oh. again, I think when Ohio State hears something, they hear a doubt, there's a challenge there. And I think – so maybe we have a Mano? bold prediction fight. Oh, bold prediction face-off? Well, no, I think off? Only one second, of you can be right. My second bold prediction – I'm going to stay away from that, that Berm bold prediction, let him have that. My second one is – on top of that 200 yards, I think Ohio State's offense is going to have a really good day, and I think Trey Sermon's going to have seven catches. I think the the aggressive nature of Penn State's defense, you've got two defensive ends that are really, really talented. You're going to be able to get after Justin Fields. What do you want to do? Get the ball out of his hands quickly. That's either Trey Sermon uh, in a little dump down or Trey Sermon on some swing routes, Trey Sermon in a screen pass to to negate that that those blitzes and uh, make Penn State think twice about blitzing the next time. I just think this is a perfect game for Ryan Day to use what Lincoln Riley showed him Trey Sermon could do for a couple of years and really use that to his advantage and, and take advantage of the Penn State Blitz. I think Trey Sermon has a really nice day in the pass game. That's a good one. I like that. Uh, I think defensively, I was a little uncertain, as was Marcus Hooker early in the game. We talked to him on Wednesday. He said he was nervous. He said he was thinking too much that you know maybe he, mentally he – he needed to adjust his thinking to being a starter and a full-time guy. 
if Penn State is going to try to attract uh, attack the middle of the field, Marcus Hooker is going to have to have a big day against the pass. He's going to have to show those ball skills that we've heard so much about from from basically everybody involved in the program that he's got that good genetics and the ability to to chase down the ball and do things that uh, are pretty special. I think he's going to have an opportunity now. He's got that start under his belt. He's more comfortable. He's more confident. Uh, and oh, and Penn State's going to have to try and throw his way because they're not going to want to throw. I think every team is going to throw to the middle of the field because Sean Wade and Seven Banks and Cameron Brown are on the outside. So this is where Marcus Hooker is going to have to earn it. I think he's going to nab two picks. Don't think either one will go back to the house, but uh, I think this will be sort of a coming out party for him. I Obviously, I talked a lot about Josh Proctor, and he is a key part of these plans, but you know, Marcus Hooker won that job coming out of training camp. Um, there was a, a good reason for that. Um, a little shaky, sometimes some some bad angles maybe. Uh, tackling, got to have to be better. He's not at that Jordan Fuller level yet, but uh, that's also a week one situation. As a first-time starter, I think this will be a big opportunity for him. Do um, you have any others you want to throw out, Berm, or you just want to go to the score? Um, I have another. Okay. Garrett Wilson is going to return a punt for a touchdown. I was going to say that. Because he's been way too close way too many times. And it just, it's just time to do it. So uh, I know that one of the staples of, of true sports analyses is saying that something is due to happen, and uh, that is due. Garrett Wilson is due to return a punt for a touchdown for the Ohio State Buckeyes. Bobby Carpenter actually hates that as sports analyses. Yeah, but that's why it's a staple of it. <laughs> It was more helpful when you said that he's been close to breaking them over and over and showing signs that it's going to happen. Totally due to break one. <laughs> uh, this is the kind of bold predictions and analysis you can't get anywhere else. No, I don't. I, there's nothing timid about these predictions, pal. I'm Spen going big. <laughs> is there anything else up your sleeve, Spencer? Or are you content with what you've provided? Uh, I think Penn State will hit a touchdown of more than 50 yards. I think they've got some speed. Uh, outside that they that they can uh showcase i think it just happens every penn state ohio state game penn state hits a long touchdown and it never really seems to rattle ohio state as much as it probably should um i don't know when it'll happen how it'll happen maybe parker washington on a, on a touchdown because he's a pretty talented speedy guy but uh yeah i think penn state's gonna hit a touchdown pretty pretty lengthy touchdown and, uh you'll hear herbie and fowler talk about uh the momentum shifting and it really won't <laughs> Yeah, well, it's hard to feel that momentum when there's no uh, whiteout, no 110,000 people in the stands. Right. I wonder can, you turn up the, can you turn up the – That's what I was going to wonder. I, I bet that they'll push the envelope oh, no and doubt. make that as loud as possible. We the boys. <laughs> Austin, that is definitely going to become a gif somewhere. Uh, so thank you for that. You're welcome. I hope you find it quickly. Uh, and that you can use it as soon as this video posts uh, on Friday for our weekly feature, Bold Predictions. All right, uh, it's that time. I think we're all going to take Ohio State to win this game. Spread went up from eight to ten and a half. Not sure exactly where it will finish uh, by Saturday night. Uh, probably going to go higher. What do you think, Berm? I got a 45-24 Buckeye dub. Cover and an easy win. Straight to the point. I'm not going to say it's going to be easy, but I'm not going to say it's going to be difficult either. Uh, it's going it, to be. It's going to be, you know, an Ohio State win. Uh, you know, you put up a two touch, fourteen to three at the end of the first quarter, twenty four to seventeen at the end of the first half, and then thirty eight to 17, 45, 24 at the end. I didn't know we were going to get a quarter-by-quarter quarter breakdown of the score. Sounds like there's going to be a lot of hand-wringing at halftime, though. There always is. <laughs> have you ever been to the internet? I have, yeah. Yeah, I'm, there's a lot of that there. I'm very online. Uh, I'm going to take Ohio State 41-21. Um, I think this game is probably, like Berm said, pretty close throughout, like 34-21 going into the fourth quarter. Ohio State's defense uh, kind of shows some might. Ohio State tax on a touchdown at the end, 41-21. Chives, can I press you? Are you suggesting that Blake Halbiel is going to miss an extra point or that he's going to make two field goals? Two field goals. Okay. 
the one thing that you guys have in common is that if it's close in the second half, James Franklin will start giving away points with horrible clock management and bizarre decisions and um, late game situations that he has no idea how to handle. I don't think it'll get to that point for this particular one. Take away their best defensive player, take away their best offensive player, keep James Franklin on the sideline, put no fans in the stands for a wideout. I, I just I have a hard time finding any advantage that Penn State would possibly have in this game. Even if it was, even if there was 110,000 people in the stadium, I wouldn't pick Penn State to win this game. They're just even the, the gap between number one and number two in this league is too too large. Uh, I don't even think that the chance to respond to a loss is helpful for Penn State in this case because. Um, you know, the last couple of years, this roster has uh, filled up the transfer portal, and I'm not sure that there's a ton of buy-in for what Franklin has built there. So I have it 45-17, and I just don't think it will be that close. Um, we'll be back uh, after Halloween to get ready for this really exciting November November schedule run for the Buckeyes and uh, as they coast maybe into December. Although that Indiana game, who knows, maybe that's more meaningful than I thought. Yeah, I, I just want everyone watching this to be on the lookout – uh, on on the Twitter accounts for Austin doing that thing because that that video will be uh, edited and cut uh, totally individually and marketed uh, as frequently as possible. No, that's not a bold prediction that that you can follow through on. That won't happen. Uh, this has been Letterman Rose Bold Predictions. That's Berm and Spencer Holbrook. I'm Austin Ward. Hope you're uh, enjoying these and that you enjoy the Halloween weekend, a primetime game, Ohio State and Penn State. Can't ask for much more right now uh, as the Big Ten. Uh, well, that's another prediction. I guess that the game is actually going to happen. We can't take anything for granted. Uh, stay with us at Letterman Row for full coverage of that game and everything else with the Ohio State Buckeyes. We will see you in State College this weekend. Bye-bye.